How all this is done, this comes with a lot of practice. Why it's done, this may be pretty hard to pin down. What makes the free fall parachutist so hung up on the sport? For myself, I've found that in all my duties as an officer, which have been many and varied, it's been the most thrilling, exciting, and rewarding experience I've ever encountered. But if you ask other members of the team, you'll probably get different answers. I like free fall parachuting because of the challenge of the unknown and the thrill of competition. I like free fall parachuting because of the challenge for self-proficiency and the endless phases of research and development. For me, it's the honor of representing the United States Army before my country and the world. Being involved with free fall parachuting of this caliber is an opportunity offered to only a select few individuals within the Army structure. I like to jump because it is a challenge in keeping my country on top in the world of free fall parachuting. Of course, these are all purely personal answers to the question, why free fall parachuting? But the military applications and implications of this sport, quite apart from our public relations role, are important. For example, there's the tactical application called HALO, which stands for High Altitude, Low Opening. Picture a dark night. If you were a hostile sentry, you'd never know that this tactical team was arriving. Using the halo technique, they jumped from an aircraft flying so high it couldn't be seen or heard. They stayed in free fall, keeping together, homing on their target till the last minute. Now, they land silently, with no problem of regrouping or finding one another on the ground. The technique is experimental. The experimenters are the golden knights. Also experimental is this dart-shaped canopy known as the flex wing. Highly maneuverable, it's like a glider and shows promise for use with men or cargo. Then there's this odd configuration. It's called the parafoil, and its wing-like shape is kept in something like an inflated condition by the flow of air through and around it. As you can see, it has a remarkably flat glide ratio and is highly controllable. In fact, with a cargo load, it can even be guided from the ground by radio. The possibilities in terms of air supply are being explored. Another possible value, a pilot ejecting over hostile ground might be able to glide many miles towards safety with such a canopy as the parafoil above him. Training, research and development, competition, and public demonstrations. All things considered, we don't have to worry about finding something to keep us busy. These are some of the competition trophies, but only a small portion of our time is spent competing. A great deal of the time is spent traveling around the country and outside the U.S. giving free fall demonstrations. It's always fun, hectic but fun. The locations vary widely, but typically, it looks like this. At some 150 locations each year, across the nation and overseas as well, the Golden Knights perform for the public. This is the United States Army parachute team, the Golden Knights. Ours is a story of men who like to jump out of planes, men who are dedicated to the proposition of plunging thousands of feet above Mother Earth to bring the story of our new action army to the nation and to the world. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Staff Sergeant Bobby Rennie, member of the crack United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights. Today is my privilege to narrate for you the 966 live demonstration consisting of various aerial acrobatic maneuvers and precision parachuting accuracy performed by the finest free fall jumpers in the world today. OK, everybody listen up for the weather briefing. Uh, pretty good. Shouldn't be any problem. Everybody getting right in on target today. At 500 foot, 50 degrees, 12 knots. At 1,000 foot, it's 70 degrees at 7 knots. During today's demonstration, four passes will be made over the target area to include the baton pass, the cutaway, the diamond track, and the world-famous four-man formation. 
The target located to your immediate front is used strictly as a reference point for the jumpers and jump master in the aircraft to identify the proper landing area. The jumpers are not attempting to hit the target. They are required to turn their parachutes into the wind and make a demonstration type landing, whereas in competition jumping, they do attempt to hit the target. The initial pass today will be the baton pass. Altitude at this time, 13,500 feet, aircraft is inbound. The jumpers are away, smoke is on. Jumpers are on the same level at this time, coming in to make the hookup. And there you see the candy pole spirals being made by the smoke trails in the air. Ripcord pull has been made, and there the black and gold canopy of the United States Army parachute team, the Golden Knights. Rate of descent slowed by over 100 miles an hour on opening of the parachute. And there, ladies and gentlemen, the stand-up landing by the parachute. Ladies and gentlemen, if once again you would please direct your attention to the DC aircraft inbound for the second pass of today's show. On this pass, there will exit one jumper. The cutaway will be performed for you to show you the deliberate malfunction and recovery of a malfunctioned parachute. The jumper is away at this time. Smoke is on. This jumper wearing three parachutes will activate one at 3,000 feet, actually called streamer. And there you see the orange and white canopy being deployed above the jumper's head at this time. The jumper is releasing the left side of the canopy at this time, holding on to the left side of the canopy with his hand. Right side is being released at this time, and there you see the actual streamer of the parachute being made. And there you see the release of the cutaway. The jumper is back into free fall once again. Right hand in for the ripcord pull, and there once again, the black and gold of the United States Army parachute team, the Golden Knights. The aircraft is approaching overhead once again for the third portion of today's demonstration, the diamond track. Jumpers are away at this time. Notice the minimum amount of time it takes to separate these two people. One jumper going right of line of flight, the other jumper going left. Jumpers have reached their turn point. The turn has been made by jumper on right, jumper on left making his turn at this time. There you see the two jumpers are coming closer and closer together, speeds 160 miles an hour, and there they actually cross in the air. aircraft being flown by our own Golden Knight pilots is presently approaching overhead for its last pass of the day. This is the final event and the one which we personally feel is the most colorful. The four-man 